So welcome everyone. Um, for those of you new to Masterclass, we are an online platform that enables anyone to learn from the best. Currently, we have a catalog of more than 80 classes with industry leaders like Martin Scorsese teaching directing, Serena Williams teaching tennis, Gordon Ramsay teaching cooking, and today we're so excited to talk to the incredible Bobby Brown. What you're watching right now is Masterclass Live, which is a weekly way for our Masterclass members to connect with our instructors, get their questions answered, and dive deeper into the learning beyond our app, streaming lessons, and downloadable workbooks. In the light of the current climate, Masterclass is providing this member-only benefit free for anyone to access for the foreseeable future. My name is Kale, and I am a creative producer at Masterclass, and I've had the pleasure of producing Bobby's class alongside her and an incredible team. Joining us today, and I'm sure she needs no introduction, is Bobby Brown, a world-renowned makeup artist, best-selling author, and serial entrepreneur. Bobby, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, it's so nice. Thank you so much for talking to me. Of course. And, you know, before we just jump in, I wanted to say that, you know, I'm not someone who wears makeup. And so in working on your class, I had to put myself in the shoes of the students who would be watching. And I got to learn from you. And I think that I got to see how much about makeup is about choice. You know, you get to decide how much is just right for you. And there's so many different styles out there, but your style is really simple, right? Well, my style is, is so much about me because I really do believe that people are beautiful without makeup. And makeup is a way to help you feel more beautiful, help you feel confident. I am not someone that likes to cover up and change people's faces. I like to embrace and use makeup as a way just to make people look healthier. and, and ultimately that makes you feel better. Right, and that's so important right now. I mean, the reality is that so many people are working from home at the moment, and that means that people are either alone or with their families. And so I was wondering, and I think this is a great place for us to really start, is why should people be wearing makeup right now? What can it do for us? Well, if you think about it, some people wear makeup because other, you know, for other people. I've always worn makeup for myself. For some reason, it instantly makes me feel better. And clearly, I don't wear a lot. I mean, I'm doing this live. I don't know how many thousands of people are watching. And I really didn't put a lot on, but I put just enough on that I felt awake. I felt healthier. And for me, it's so much about moisture, how much moisture I put on my face and a little bit of blush that it makes a big difference how I feel. It's, I look in the mirror once and then I'm done but I carry those feelings with me all day. Yeah, that is, I think that's spot on. And I think it's so easy to look in the mirror. And I know in my case, the things I maybe don't like about myself or make me feel insecure are some of the first things I see. Um, and I think using makeup as a tool to kind of decide for myself what's gonna make me feel better is really powerful and empowering. Well, us women are lucky because we could do things like color our hair, we could, which I'll get into in a second. That's probably the worst part about, you know, staying home is missing my hairdresser. But, you know, we could put concealer on under our eyes. We could put blush on. You could throw lipstick on. And yes, if you're someone that likes to contour and believes that you look better, you can, you can do whatever you want with it. It's makeup. And it just instantly lifts your mood and makes you feel better. Whether you're doing a Zoom call at home, whether you are just by yourself in your apartment, it's amazing what a little bit does. Even putting on little teeny earrings makes a difference. Right, and you know, I'm so glad that you referenced our Zoom call. You know, we sent out an alert that we would be hosting this live session with you to give people a chance to submit their own questions. And we received so many questions. And one Masterclass member enrolled in your class named Kathy had a really great one. And she said that, you know, so many of our meetings, events, and even times with friends are being moved online right now. And so she wanted to ask you, you know, what could we be doing to look our best on camera? Well, I've been doing a lot of Zoom calls. I'm on, you know, some meetings with some very young, beautiful people that just seem to have wake up in the morning and the hair just kind of falls in place. And others have hair in a, in a bun and a ponytail and craziness. And it's actually, you know, I think a very calming time because it's everyone could be real. So maybe you see people dressed up, but now everyone is at home. Sometimes there's babies screaming, there's wild hair. 
But you know what? Do what makes you comfortable. I am wearing my Lululemon tights and I'm wearing a navy sweater. I always wear a navy sweater. People think I wear black, but I wear navy. And as far as makeup, I have moisturizer on. I have a little concealer under my eyes. I have some bronzer on my face and lip. And I usually do my eyebrows and a little bit of mascara. And that's it. You know, that's it. But when you guys shot me, I had Hannah and Susanna doing my makeup for camera. That was way more makeup. But for Zoom, you don't need as much. And how long did your routine take you today? Oh, two seconds. So I'm going to just show you a couple things. Now, probably the most important thing I have is this brown shadow that I'm, I'm not, you know, talking about brands right now. But if you are a woman with dark hair of a certain age, this is the most amazing thing. Because guess what? You could just go. And when you open up the Zoom, you see it. And you could just go fill in your gray, your part. It comes in all different colors. So, and you can also use it as eyeshadow, by the way. And then when I'm doing my makeup and it just doesn't look right, I mean, we've been in the house. Sometimes I just take a little bit of a moisturizer and the trick is you put it on your hands and even after your makeup's done, you just kind of tap it on your cheek and I tap it all over and it just kind of brings moisture to the skin and don't forget your neck. And honestly, all I really use right now is either that brown shadow or a plain brown shadow some kind of a bronzer and I'm using right now kind of a pinky bronzer. I don't, and the trick with the bronzer guys is when you put it on low and when you put it on, start with your neck, do a little bit smile, little on your forehead. And when you're doing your own blush, the trick is look in the mirror and just blend it in because you want it to look like it's part of your skin. And that's really important. And honestly, that's all I do. I put a little bit of gloss on my lips. And sometimes when I'm really feeling tired, I'll take something that has some luminosity in it, which is just a little bit of sheen. I don't even know if it, you feel different. I don't know if you look different, but you feel different. And that is it, honestly. But I'm also lucky I wear glasses. So it kind of hides a little bit. Yeah, and you know what? I think this is a great opportunity to really set the record straight about something. I mean, there's a lot of myths about nude makeup, that mm -hmm. it's washed out, that it's beige, and I don't think that's the case. It's not. Nude makeup is actually the color of your skin, but for some reason, nude makeup became beige, it became washed out, it became one beige for everybody, and we are all different skin colors. I mean, we, you know, I don't care if you're you know, black, I don't care if you're Latino, I don't care if you're white, we are all a range of colors and we've got to find colors that are right for our skin. And for me, the trick to, to everyday makeup is finding colors that are the color of your skin. It's not that complicated once you find the right things. And I mean, I think a lot of people might wonder, how do you find those right colors? Not the easiest thing. I mean, for me, it's easy, but you have to make sure, first of all, you start with your foundation, if you wear foundation. And I'd really love people during this time of being home to try not to wear foundation or even use foundation just to spot correct, to, you know, if there's any kind of little darkness, you can cover it. But the only way to wear foundation, and I cover this like crazy in the class, is on the side of the face if it blends in. And most foundation on the market, unfortunately, has some pinky in it so it doesn't look natural. So you'll see it on the, on the side of the face. And that's why sometimes people have to mix their own with a few different colors. But once you put it on, it should just blend in. And I don't think people need foundation all over because then it just looks like you're wearing a mask. And that's just not my, I, my opinion. It's not the most beautiful aesthetic. I love people's skin. I love healthy skin. Right. And I think, you know, once you find the colors that work for you, you don't need a whole bunch of products because there are so many out there on the market. Yes. I think you've shown in your, in your class, you kind of allude to a number of different tricks. Like you mentioned already using eyeshadow in your hair when you need to touch up. Um, can you share a few more maybe tips and tricks like that? Sure. Um, you know, there's so many lipstick, by the way, you could, you buy a lipstick, it might not be the right color for you. You're it, you know, maybe you ordered a same color a friend had, 
but you could take it and you can share it down. You could stain it on your lips. You could rub your fingers together and put it on your cheeks. For shoots, we put it on people's eyes. I don't recommend that to people because it sometimes could get in your eyes, so it might not feel good. But you can use things for different ways. Bronzers, I don't see why you can't put on your eyes. You know, it's sometimes the color is too orange. So depending what color you have, you could try it that way. And in a pinch, guys, you could take even the bronzer, mix it with a little bit of gloss and stain it on your lips. So, you know, there's many things you could use different ways. Right. And I think, you know, in your class, you have a really great lesson called the one minute makeup. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that routine is helping people to get up on with a busy schedule and go to work. And for many right now, that kind of sense of routine looks very different. And so I was wondering, you know, what does your one minute makeup look like when you're working from home? Well, my, um, most people's one minute makeup is my 30 second makeup. So usually moisturizer goes on first. You throw in some concealer under your eyes, your foundation around your nose, blush bronzer on your cheek, mascara, brush your brows up, and you could use eyeshadow for eyebrows. You could use like a little teeny brush on brow and kind of you're done. You know, it's not, it's not the smoky eye. It's not the jeweled eye. It's not the, you know, it's not even eyeshadow, really. I mean, people don't realize if you put mascara on and fill in your brows, sometimes you don't need, you don't need eyeshadow. You can add a liner sometimes. Right. Okay, we have a visitor. You know, when we're live and working from home, it's going to happen. He's got clothes on. I've heard there's some, you know, people walking around in shorts, boxer shorts. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all good and very real, just like you said. And, you know, I think a moment of the class that I really loved is actually in your introduction. And you told a really personal story about falling in love with makeup by watching your mom. And I was thinking a lot about how, you know, I've already said, I don't wear any makeup. And I think a lot of men, um, myself included, maybe have grown up and only seen the women in our lives wearing makeup. And so I wanted to ask you, from your opinion, um, what can makeup do for men? And can you maybe share some grooming tips for us as well? Sure. Well, actually, some men do wear makeup. There are a lot of men that are makeup artists that always have makeup on. They, I think they've, they got into makeup because they felt better once they put it on. I personally don't like makeup on men's skin. I don't think they need it. But, you know, makeup is one thing. Skincare and grooming is another thing. So guys have to groom. And, you know, you've got to trim your beard. You've got to maybe put some moisturizer in your beard. They now have all things on the market, you know, to take care of your beard, though you could probably just use what you use on your skin. And men need a little bit of eye cream. Men need moisturizer and, you know, grooming. And that's, and that's in my opinion, that's it. I've been lucky enough to do men's makeup and grooming for some celebrities in my career as a makeup artist. I mean, I even got to do um, Keith Richards with the black smoky eye. Uh, so I've been really lucky. I've got, I've got to work with men's makeup that are being photographed. But in real life, guys don't need it. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I really agree. I mean, it, again, it goes back to choice and what makes each person feel comfortable. Um, you know, rock and roll, by the way, yeah, men wear makeup. There's no question. They do smoke, you know, they'll do a pencil in their eye. They'll do it. It's fine. I couldn't imagine going into a meeting and having a man greet me in a suit with makeup on. I don't think it would work or it would set me back. And maybe it'll change. Maybe I'm old fashioned that way, but I don't think it's necessary. Right. And I, you know, I think that your class speaks to both everyday people who are wanting to use makeup, <clears throat> excuse me, to feel better about themselves and also professional and aspiring makeup artists. And a lot of artists right now, <clears throat> excuse me. Your water. Yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, a second for water, yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically right now, because so many people are stuck at home, they might not be able to physically go out and work. And so I wanted to talk to you about, you know, what can these artists do who are looking for ways to work virtually? Well, that is a really good question. I am someone that supports my fellow artists. And, you know, 
I'm not even talking about getting paid at the moment, but there are ways that artists could continue working, whether it's working on your Instagram, putting your photos up there, working on your website. So when things do get back to normal, you'll be able to have something that you're really proud of. Certainly make connections on your social media. And I actually spoke to a woman earlier who works at a department store and is feeling, you know, such a loss that she's missing her customers. I said, why don't you go and do a class online for your customers and they could feel part, they could follow along at home. I mean, this is the time for all entrepreneurs out there to figure out how to reach people, how to offer something that people are not offering. I, I know physical therapists that are bringing their business online. I know chefs that are having you know cooking lessons. So I think that for an entrepreneurial makeup artist, you could probably figure out how to offer at a very, very affordable, reasonable price, one-on-one -on -one lessons that you could do or group lessons. So you just got to keep doing things. And, you know, we don't know if this is going to be two weeks, two months, three months. We have no idea. But the more you keep occupied and busy and work on your, your craft and you work on your positivity and your mood, it really is, is going to pay off in the long run. And, and I, I think that's a really great point. And what are some things that you're doing to really, you know, keep practicing your craft during this period? Well, it's really funny. I don't know what I'm so busy with, but I get phone calls every day about doing things online. I, you know, I, a, two, an hour ago, I did an online talk for someone. I, you know, I have magazines from Harper's Bazaar to El India that have reached out. I've done, a, you know, with Haven's Kitchen, which is a cooking school in New York. We did an Instagram live where I opened up my kitchen and they taught me how to cook my leftovers. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things out there and I'm watching a lot of things. You know, you're on your Instagram and all of a sudden this one's going live, that one's going live. And you know, there's a lot to learn right now. And one of the things I am so grateful to be able to have produced a masterclass because a lot of people now that hadn't heard about it are, telling they're they're texting me or emailing me or dming me and saying i finally had the time to see the master class and i learned so much so i think you know this is an amazing time for everyone out there to you know deep dive in those amazing master lessons well i that's really special for me to hear so thank you for that and i i think your class is really something to be proud of it it shows people that there are options there are so many different ways to achieve so many different looks. Um, and you really do break it down step by step. Um, I'm basically a simple person and I like to teach simple things to people. And for, for those artists out there or women out there that have a different aesthetic and like a different look, my, my, my advice would be learn the basics. And you know what? relearn the basics. I never stop learning. There's always new ways for me to figure out how to do things. There's new ways that I learn from other makeup artists out there. There's other, there's so many products on the market that are new and different that are really interesting. And so it's really the time to go back, learn the basics. And then once you like learn those basics, you can go apply anything you want and, and experiment, you know, with, with any of your looks. I, I showed some experimenting on our master class, how to do, you know, how to just let yourself go. I took it a little too far, but I, we did it. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, to follow up on this idea of experimentation, for artists out there who are trying to build a portfolio, what do you think makes a great portfolio for a working makeup artist today? And how can they use this time of experimentation to make it even better? Well, I, for me, a good portfolio is someone that shows diversity, someone that could take someone and make them look like they wear absolutely no makeup, take someone in different situations, studio, daylight, all, you know, all the different ways that you could show people different light and, and show a range, show an editorial side, show, you know, what you did on a regular person, what you did on a model and, a portfolio should be, if you are someone that hasn't done magazine work, just, I don't care if you do an Instagram. I don't care if you create an Instagram of all your different looks, but show diversity and show scale, you know, different skin colors, different, you know, 
changing people's faces, before and afters. There's nothing I like better than a split screen with no makeup and with the finished makeup. That really shows talent. Yeah, and for kind of everyday people that might have a preference, like I, I think I believe you do, to actually go into makeup counters and talk to people and try different makeups. If you're ordering makeup online, do you have any tips for what to look for to find high quality makeup? Well, it's uh, interesting because I'm sure many people, including myself, has seen things on websites or Instagram and order it and then it arrives and it doesn't look so good. So first of all, you could send it back, <laughs> number one. But number two, um, you know, it's unfortunately, it's hit or miss, but there's so many great things offered at reasonable prices now. There's really with the new indie brands, there's so many different price points. You know, there's the high-end price points that hopefully you'll get to go back into a department store and touch things, or a Sephora or an Alta where you can actually touch things or reorder what you like. Um, but basically you have to kind of, you know, know what color range you're in. So it's not always that easy. It's easier to, to order skincare, but there's nothing like being able to touch it. Absolutely. And I want to take a moment for those of you just joining us. Uh, this is Masterclass Live, a new series of events on the Masterclass platform where members can interact with Masterclass instructors and outside experts to take the learning beyond our video streaming classes, workbooks, and the app. In light of current events, these sessions are going to be made available for everyone, members and non-members, to access. Today, we're here with Bobby Brown, who is teaching, who her class is teaching makeup and beauty. So Bobby, I want to take a moment to say, you know, you joined the Masterclass family in November. What's been going on since then outside of current circumstances, but what have you been working on? Well, my experience doing the Masterclass was um, absolutely unbelievable. When I got the call from you guys and asked me to do it, I couldn't believe it. And working with your teams, I, I've never worked with a production team like Masterclass, I will, I, I will say. And the amount of talent and people that came. And honestly, we spent five days together and you know, we're, we're like old friends. I mean, it's you deep dive, you every single you know, professor, every single teacher that does Masterclass, you have to trust because you just throw yourself there and you just have to trust the people that are, are creating this uh, masterpiece, basically. So since I did the master class, my, my social has skyrocketed, you know, comments from people asking for more, um, you know, more lessons has been great. And so it's, for me, it's been really exciting because yes, I am an entrepreneur. Yes, I have different businesses, but basically I'm a makeup artist. What I love to do is be in a studio with my team, my posse and create things. So it's really given me this, you know, excitement to be able to continue my craft. So I, I'm very grateful to Masterclass. Um, I'm also, you know, working on Evolution 18, which is a wellness brand. And for me, beauty, health, wellness is something that really works together. Because I've always said for the past, you know, 25 years, the better you take care of yourself on the inside, the better you'll look on the outside. And you won't need as much makeup and you will just look better. So for me, it goes hand in hand. Right. And can you tell us a little bit more about what is Evolution 18 and what, what does it offer for people? Evolution 18 is a wellness brand. As I said, it, it, they are supplements and they're everything from collagen to hyaluronic acid. We even, we even have a CBD gummy, which has been very helpful. It's called Chill. Um, one of my favorite products, we have another one called Debloat, which actually says on the package, helps you fit into a little black dress. So a lot of these things I kind of made for myself, but I know that, you know, like, like my women that I work with, with my customers, myself, my friends, my sister, we all share the same kind of issues and, and guys too. I mean, guys get bloated too, if they had too much fun the night before. So I just, I put these really great ingredients together that really are supplements to a healthy diet because I am, a, now I am a health coach. I went back to school, uh, to the Institute of Integrative Nutrition after um, I left the, you know, the brand that I founded 
three and a half years ago and I got my degree as a health coach and I've kind of gone full circle from being in the beauty business to being in the wellness business and I'm feel like I'm back being a makeup artist so I'm pretty happy. I really love that and I, I think it's very true that makeup and health and wellness all go hand in hand and I know when we were on set together we talked quite a bit about health and wellness and it's, it's sprinkled throughout your class, but I know you talk a lot about how important staying um, hydrated is, exercise, going outside, things that seem to be really hard for us to do right now if we're taking care of ourselves. Um, do you have any thoughts on how we can be keeping ourselves healthy in this time? Yes, you know, it's funny. One thing people always complain about is time. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to see my friends. I don't have time. I don't have time. Well, this is the one time we actually have time. So if you have not been drinking enough water, start now. I struggle with it. I push myself. You know, I just pulled out from my cabinet this bottle. It's called Hydrate. And it like, you know, every time you drink it and finish it, it'll tell me on my, on my device. I put, I have lemon in there right now. I have a little bit of stevia. So it tastes like a lemonade. Sometimes I put oranges in. Drinking water is the key and moving your body. I don't care if you walk slow. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you hold a plank. I don't care if you, you know, whatever you do, there's no excuses now. And you know what? Turn on, turn on your TV, turn on, open up your computer, go to, you, go to YouTube. There are such wonderful yoga classes, fitness classes. And just, you know what, just like Nike says, just do it. It's gonna make you feel better. And you know what, guess what? Then you've got other things to do. You've got your housework to do. You've got, you know, so many things. So if you don't keep yourself healthy and feeling good, it's gonna be really easy to be in a funk, really easy. And call your friends. Yeah, so important just to connect and be connected to people. And this is a great chance to kind of Go back to people you haven't talked to in a while and check in. But could you imagine if this happened in another time where we didn't have the connection? Right. You know, it's, there's no excuses now. Yeah, and we're more spread out than we've probably ever been. And so yeah. keeping in touch with our friends and family is harder to do, but almost easier too, because it's possible. Yeah, and, and having real conversations instead of your normal text conversations. Like I would say, even if you're just with one extra, one person a day, just call someone that you know and love and, and just didn't have time to, to really spend with them. And so Bobby, I, I referenced before that we put an alert out to the Masterclass community asking for questions. And I have a bunch of questions that I'd love to um, run past you and get your thoughts on now. Um, we might not be able to get through all of them today, but I'm so excited to have this discussion with you. Um, and we, you actually started to discuss this first one earlier. It, it, it's about foundation. And Kirsty asks, can foundation be good for your skin or should we always try to minimize the use of it? Well, foundation isn't bad for your skin. I might not like the look of most foundation on the skin unless it's something that really suits your skin and looks natural. As long as you wash your face at night, it's, there's nothing wrong with wearing foundation. And guess what? If you forget one night, it's really not a big deal. You just wash it the next day. So, you know, foundation is fine to wear. Just make sure you take it off at night. Right. And I, I know in your class that you mentioned kind of the importance of taking a break for makeup too and just getting used to seeing yourself without makeup on. Honestly, I think it's a really great thing to do, you know, whether it's the weekends, whether it's a day, you just put your hair in a ponytail, put a face oil on, you know, you guys know if you saw my master class, I am um, a really big fan of apricot kernel oil that is only, a, it's under $10 that you can get it at your, you know, grocery store, your health food store, but you let your skin breathe and that's really important too. And, you know, and you've got to, Self-care doesn't have to be over the top. You could also take the almond oil, put it on your hands. You could put a little bit in your hair. You could definitely put it on your feet and put some socks on. It Hydration, you know, from the inside and the outside really does make you feel better, it makes you look better. 
Yeah, absolutely. And kind of staying on this topic of healthy skin, you know, a lot of students sent in questions about how to cover up fine lines and wrinkles. And I think there's two questions here. The first being, you know, what would you say to people who feel like they need to remove these lines to feel beautiful? And well, um, as, as your 62 year old beauty expert, <laughs> And I spent a lot of my time looking at pictures of myself, both on Zoom, on video, you know, all over the internet. It's amazing what the right lighting does. So there's some times where I'm just like, oh my God. And then I realize, you know what? I am 62, I am healthy. I wanna look like a healthy version. For me personally, I'm not someone that shoots things in my face. You know, I'm, I'm not opposed or against any choices anyone makes. I have chosen to color my 100% gray hair, but I am making peace with the lines in my face. That saying, if I am not hydrated and I don't have the right moisturizer on my skin, my lines look bad. If I am hydrated and have the right cream on, my, my lines don't bother me. So, you know, being rested, is everything and think about yourself on a vacation how good you look when you're on a vacation try to try to bring that up in your head right and when it comes to um, you know makeup that I could put on to minimize the, uh, these fine lines and wrinkles what would you recommend well there are a lot of blur products on the market I don't always think they actually blur they're just kind of you know, a little, sometimes they do, but I really do find that moisturizer and oil, like a teeny bit of oil will help plump the line. So that really works a lot. And so it's really moisture that's going to make the lines softer to look at. And there's nothing that's going to get rid of them, you know, besides Botox. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people get Botox and they look natural, normal, and fine. And other times people get Botox and they don't. Right, right. And I know, you know, people come up to you and say all the time that I just don't know what to do with my makeup anymore. And maybe the things that they used to do don't work for them anymore. Um, you know, how should people be evolving their makeup over time? Well, I think that a lot of things have changed and I think they're going to continue to change. You know, more and more people are are using less makeup and more and more people are using more makeup. So, you know, there is the, you know, the world out there that does like full coverage, contouring, you know, individual lashes, false lashes, you know, more glamorous than um, I am. And that's okay. So the trick is to find what makes you feel your most beautiful. I have, I have no judgment for someone that, you know, looks in the mirror and is happy with what they look like. And it should be, you know, different. I am someone that I'm comfortable in my skin, especially, you know, recently more comfortable to wear less makeup. So really the trick in life is to find what makes you comfortable. And people always say, well, how do I become confident? If you're comfortable in your skin, that's how you become confident. And yes, do I wish I had my hairdresser here to give me like the best blowout, you know, and have my stylist there to give me the best outfit for camera, but I don't right now. And it's okay. Right. And, you know, I, I know you mentioned contouring a minute ago and in the class you touch on it briefly and you, you share some really personal stories about when you've had makeovers done and they've contoured you in different ways. And that didn't make you feel like your best self. Um, and, Genevieve is a, is a member of Masterclass who's senior class and was really curious about, you know, why you do feel the way you do about contouring and, um, you know, what it um, can, can do for people and why you don't love it. Well, it's funny because I'm not a fan of telling someone that there's something wrong with their face. So you know, changing the shape of your nose. I find that if you're going to contour it, I'm going to see it on your face. I'm going to see the brown. And you know what? Why does everyone have to have this perfect little nose? So, but that saying, if someone wants to put something on it because it makes them feel better, that's fine. 
And I've worked with many actresses that I have not, I have not contoured and they've asked me, could you please? And so I do it and I show them a mirror and they say, thank you, that's so much better. I did it so lightly, I'm not even sure if it was there. But it's important as a makeup artist to make people feel comfortable with what they look like. But I don't contour, but sometimes I will use bronzer, you know, just a little bit under the neck, because right now that's kind of my point that drives me crazy. And by making it a little bit, you know, and I don't have to blend it. So I, I'm choosing a color that you could just put on. So am I contouring? I don't know. Could I, you know, use it to kind of contour my face? I could, but what for? I'd much rather enhance and bring out, you know, the cheeks instead of trying to make cheekbones that aren't there. Right, and it, it makes me think back to, in your masterclass, you shared a story from early on in your professional makeup career where you were doing Gary Hall's makeup. Mm -hmm. I think you, you kind of learned what worked for Gary was not something that you had the, the you, you said I think the talent for at that time. Could you share a little bit of that story? Sure, I was a very young makeup artist and I got hired um, to do a cover of British Cosmopolitan with the uber supermodel Jerry Hall. Well, you can imagine I was a nervous wreck and I packed all my things. I arrived at the shoot. She could not have been any nicer. She was married to Mick at the time and I did her makeup and luckily she had her own false eyelashes on because I, there was, I was not very good at false eyelashes. I did her makeup, it probably took about 45 minutes. We talked the whole time and I showed her a mirror and she said, oh wow, thank you, it's so pretty. Can I just make a few changes? And I said, sure. She says, can you hand me that? Could you hand me that? And all of a sudden she redid her whole face like, instead of me being, oh my God, what did I do wrong and be upset, I realized it was an opportunity to learn what she was doing. I did not have the ability to contour the way she did it. It was masterful. I mean, she had worked with, you know, famous makeup artists like Way Bandy and all these other guys back then. And she, now I've, I'll post the picture. She looks contoured but beautiful, but certainly not where my aesthetic was. And every time I did someone's makeup, famous or not, I would show a mirror and I would adjust what they wanted adjusted. Sometimes it's an eyebrow that one of the supermodels wants adjusted. Sometimes, you know, they're like, oh, it's fine. Oh, it's fine. They don't even look, they don't care. Isabella Rossellini, oh, it's beautiful. She didn't care. She knew she looked beautiful. Right. And you know, in your class, you have a chapter specifically for aspiring makeup artists, and you do share like how important it is to show a mirror to your model and have conversations. And you know, if if you're a, a model having your makeup done, it's okay to pull the makeup artist aside and have conversations about what you like, and maybe if something isn't working, how to how to fix it. Is that right? Absolutely. Well, first of all, communicating with someone is you know, it's a skill and it's a gift because, you know, someone has to be able to tell you they don't love what you've done or they love it or they would like it different. And I learned this early on. I'll never forget. I was at a shoot with Cindy Crawford and the, I did her makeup and she said, I love it. Great. And the hairdresser did her hair. And afterwards she said, thank you. It's beautiful. And we left to go uh, shoot on, on location. She said to the hairdresser, oh, you don't have to stay. Hairdresser left and, and Cindy, Cindy said to me, do you have a brush? I said, all right, I might. I gave it to her, she goes, oh my God, my hair. And she combed it out and fixed it. But she was so kind to this artist that clearly was a nervous wreck and did not do a great job. And I just thought, you know what, there's a way to treat people and you know, I've never forgotten that she was like that. But you are okay to tell someone and if you are a woman that goes to a counter and gets your makeup done, and you don't like it, well, you don't wanna waste your time. Just say, you know what, it's too much. There's a way to say it. It's too much for me. Could you show me how I could do it with less? Just communicate. Right, and I think it's, it's a little bit of a change in topic, but I know because I've heard from many people that I know, you know, when they're doing their makeup, 
they're maybe afraid to go in and change things because they think if they make a mistake, they have to start all over. Have you experienced that? No, I mean, the only time I've started all over was when I realized how bad it was. I had a couple experiences early on in my makeup career where I was once hired to do a famous model, Kim Alexis, for a cover of, I think it was Glamour magazine. And we had to be ready for sunrise, which meant, you know, 545. So we got up at 445. I met her in some dark room, did her makeup. And by the time the sun came up, I realized she looked awful. The colors were wrong and things weren't blended. And I literally had a, a one second to say, oh my God. And so I didn't have to wash her face, but I took a moisturizer with a sponge and I kind of took it all down and blended it. And I was able then to quickly build it up. And as an artist, there is a skill at doing things fast and figuring it out and visually looking and being present. For years when I would do fashion shows, the models would be late, we'd have to start, Anna would be in the front row or the editors would be there and models would be coming in from the last show and sometimes they come in with the most intense, dark, bright, awful makeup and of course I was hired to do a much more subtle job and you have to quickly, four or five makeup artists attack, take the makeup off, get them ready. So you have to be insightful, you've got to be visually quick, and you've got to move on your feet and be focused. Right, and you know, when we talk about having to be quick in that way, um, Jesse had a question, what is your single best multi-purpose tool? Hmm, right here, guys, my fingers. There's no question. If the foundation doesn't look right, I could put moisturizer on, I can go like this, I could do all that. If the blush doesn't look right, you could blend it in. But probably my the best tool, which I keep in my kit, is this little teeny brush from a makeup artist from the UK named Ruby that has three different heads, fits together. It's in my it's in my purse. You could use it for your lips, for your eyes, for your brows. So I like things that you could do different things with. Right, absolutely. And you know, I, I brought up just a second ago about um, you know whether you need to start over or not and you know I have another question here from Nancy and she talks about every time she applies her eyeshadow her eyes she says look more bruised than smoky and so I wanted to get your opinion what what could be going wrong there and how might Nancy fix that to get the, the look that she's going after well I think two things there I, I, I first think that the color is wrong so for something to look bruisey, it maybe has too much black in it, could have some red in it. Anything with red is gonna make you look tired, it's gonna make you look bruised. So make sure that the colors don't have red. And I'm not sure, Nancy, if you are putting colors that are too dark for your skin, because that could also go haywire, which is why when I teach the smoky eye, I teach this buildable way to do makeup. You start with the lightest, then you add the next lightest, then you add the next one until you get to the darkest. And it's layered, so it's blended. It's the opposite of blended. You know, blending is you take something really dark and fuzz it all down, and that, that's not always so easy for people. So if we start light and blend up, it's buildable, and I think that makes a big difference. Right, and for anyone who hasn't seen Bobby's Masterclass yet, Bobby breaks down how to apply the perfect smoky eye in her class step by step. And I mean, it, I remember leaving the section of our shoot talking about the smoky eye and all of a sudden realizing, oh, like it's actually, it doesn't have to be that hard. Right, it's, it's not. And by the way, a smoky eye for fashion shows are completely different than, a, you know, an at home or a wedding or a black tie smoky eye. For fashion shows, I often have to take like black grease paint and do like a, an intense kind of, you know, really messed up smoky eye, depending on the look or an editorial shoot. So as a makeup artist, you know, I talk about scope and it's good to be able to do both. Right. And, you know, when we were working on the smoky eye with our model, Hannah, you know, she had these beautiful blue eyes and you're able to talk about different color combinations that worked really well on her. And Lauren is another, Masterclass member who's taking your class and would love to know about other color combinations, maybe for hazel eyes or other different colors. 
Well, certainly the grays always work on everybody. The smokies, the grays, you know, from, it's the gradation from white to black, like all in the middle. If you think of a paint chart, you could do a brown smoky eye. So again, you know, go into a, when, when you're able to go back to paint stores or just go online. And if you look at the paint, you know, they all have different tones and look at a brown one, look at a green one, look at a purple one. They have all the different tones. So you could start with, you know, the lightest color up into the darkest. And, you know, for hazel eyes, I mean, you can't go wrong with browns. Hazel eyes also looks really great with the right plummy purple, but it can't be too red. If it's too red, you're going to look tired. Right. And, you know, color is so important. And I think it's easy to go, well, actually, let me ask you, do you, is it possible to go too far with color? I know when, I, when we experimented on set in your class, you felt like maybe you did, but like, how do you find that balance between, you know, being playful with color, finding what works for you without going too far? Well, it's, you do it and you say, wow, that's cool. Oh, well, why don't I do that? Wow, that looks good. And then you do something else, say, that's interesting. And then you try something else, you're like, okay. And then you go try something else and you're like, oh my God, that looks terrible. And that's what happened. I remember I kept building up the eye and then I ended up putting an extra blue on one side. And then all of a sudden I noticed that it made her eyes look uneven in her head. And it was, we were on such a deadline. There was no way I was going to ask the, you know, the guys, can I just do this over again? <laughs> so I, I used the mistake to say, look, to me, it was a mistake. To me, I went too far. You know, other people said, no, 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 it's really great. No, to me, I thought I went too far. Right. And I think, you know, it's actually such a cool insight for people to have into not only your process, but the process of making your class. You know, there are many different cameras on you as you're working, but we also had monitors that you would step away to look at what you were doing and kind of make that evaluation on what you needed to do. Yeah, it was, it was, it was complicated because I had one light on me sideways and every time i put my head down in something i'm like no you can't shoot a woman of a certain age you can't shoot anyone doing that it's not the most beautiful so i've gotten really good at doing makeup like this <laughs> head up you know the right angle but then you know the concern is the model and then there's cameras all over the place but what does it really look like in the monitor so i had two artists in the monitor i had an assistant in the monitor but I still needed to go look because I tend to see things that other people don't. I'm kind of eagle-eyed that way. But, you know, I think the important thing for people to know that are out there that are maybe insecure about their own work, those of us that are artists, makeup artists, we are not like these gods out there. We are, we are human and we are learning and we are not sure sometimes of what we're doing is the right you know, other times we're like, wow, that's really great. I know I, I nailed that. We're normal, we're human. And just like you see chefs doing these, you know, master classes, and I am the farthest thing from a chef, I'm sure there's times where they're like, I'm not sure. Was that good? What do you think? We're normal. And guess what, guys? It's okay to ask someone, what do you think of this? Do you think it's the right color? Do the eyebrows match? So that's why it's good to have a posse and build your team. Right. And you know, we, we all work so closely together, putting your, putting your class together, because I think you got, your team was so excellent with all the expertise on not only the styles that you were trying to show, but also your style specifically. And it was such an exercise in communication and bonding. And I think that was really special to kind of look back on and, and see how we work together. And from your point of view, does that kind of mirror what professional shoots are like when you're doing an editorial shoot? I mean, it absolutely does. Even though as a freelance artist, there's so many times where I get hired for a job where I walk in, I don't know anyone. And it takes, you know, a while to get comfortable. But it's so awesome when you have your team, you have a photographer, a stylist, the hair, you know, dresser, the makeup artists, you know, the, the assistants, everyone that you just work with together because it's, it's like your comfort zone. They could push you in certain ways. Or, or you could say, you know, I'm just having a bad day. I don't feel good. And, and they cover your, you know, they cover your back or they say, 
I remember when I was a young makeup artist, I was really good friends with one of the assistant photographers. And he would come over to me and he'd say, you know, you should really look, the mascara just ran down her face or this. And I realized I better get my, you know, act together and go stand right by the monitor because the assistants, they see it. And that's when I learned, you gotta be right there. It was way before there was retouching. So we had to be good at our jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And I have another question from Tamara and she, you know, would really love, uh, Basically, how, how do you effectively cover dark circles under the eyes? And I think a, a great, like, how do I do it answer would really help. Well, first you start with an eye cream. You need an eye cream because if you just put a concealer or a corrector on, it will either get in the lines, it will just not do the right thing. And so the trick is the amount of eye cream, depending how dry you are. And it's almost like you're creating like a cushion for the eye cream to just blend in together. It's almost like you're changing the texture of the concealer, the corrector. And depending on what your, your depth of darkness, the formula is, is the key as much as the color. So I usually like one that is either creamy, but not greasy, not dry. I find the wands don't work for me because they just kind of flatten things out and I don't like flattening. I also, when I use under eye pencils, you know, corrector, concealer pencils, I, it's a creamy formula. So it blends with the moisturizer. So the trick is to look in the mirror and find something that's going to correct what you have. If you're purple in your eyes, if you're black in your eyes, if whatever it is, you need peachy or pinky colors that's going to correct it and actually be too light to wear by itself. And then you choose something that's one shade lighter than your skin color, put it on top and you make sure you get it on the inner corner of the eye and you just, you use your finger and then you let it sit and you might need to go back and add more of one of them. But every day it's different. Some days you're less dark under your eyes, other days you're more. And um, Heaven asks, so what if my makeup is creasing under my eyes? So if I've done all of that and it starts to crease, what can I do? Well, if it's creasing, you have either put too much moisturizer on because it's just going to go in creases. And if you have lines, you know, lines under your eye, you need just the right amount of cream that will smooth the area and hydrate it. So you could immediately to fix it, to not start all over, add a little bit more of um, the concealer or the corrector, and then put a very, very light amount of, of face powder on top of it. Very light that really will basically just change the texture and make it, uh, you know, make it stay. We'll almost lock it in place. So that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, that, I think that's great. And I was, I was actually wondering, and again, another little kind of shift in our conversation, I, I'd love to talk about, you know, we've talked in, our, in the class about how beauty standards have changed. And I, I'd love to hear from you, like, what, what is beautiful today, in, from your opinion? And, you know, what can people watching do to, you know, find this balance between what is, you know, the standard of beauty and what, you know, is really working for them? Because I think there's some, everyone's somewhere in the middle. Right. And I think everyone, people have different standards of beauty and it has changed. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, you know, there was the role models were Barbie, um, you know, the cheerleaders at your school, uh, you know, Cheryl Teague, you know, Christy Brinkley, clearly classically beautiful. And then, you know, I always talk about Allie McGraw, the first, you know, dark haired, strong eyebrow beauty, which helped me realize my own beauty. But then as I evolved, I realized I love women with a strong nose. I love, a, you know, the women that have a bump in the nose. I love freckles on the face. I love a gap tooth. I love, you know, just all these different looks that so many more, um, you know, ways to find beauty today than ever before. There isn't anyone that isn't beautiful unless they're just a really not good person in my eyes. So I happen to think that women who are mixed cultures, mi mixed 
skin colors are just so stunning. And when someone has, you know, dark skin and blue eyes and freckles, how lucky. So, you know, there's so many, so many ways to be beautiful in this day and age. Absolutely. And, you know, because there's so many ways to be beautiful, there's so many ways to kind of find the ways that makeup works in your life. You know, there's people that are going to use it every day, only sometimes. And then there's artists that are looking for new ways to kind of make their passion for makeup into a career. And I know we have a question from Aubrey, who is 16 years old, is taking a makeup artistry class and is trying to do just that, is turn that passion into a career. And I, she was wondering what advice you might give her in today's age and what she should do. Well, my best advice is to definitely follow your passion, follow your dreams, stay in school, graduate. If you're lucky enough to be able to go to college, go to college for the education, for the experience, and just do makeup and just keep doing makeup and keep figuring out what your skill is, honing your skill and start doing your friend's makeup. You know, if you are, you know, prom, do, hopefully we'll get to prom this year, but whenever we do, you know, volunteer to do people's makeup and ask them their opinion and just be focused on what you love and keep at it. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you're at home with your families, you can be practicing on your family all the time. Yes, I used to do makeup on my grandfather. Don't even ask how he let me do that, Papa Sam. Oh, and what would you do on him? I mean, he obviously just loved you so much to let you experiment that way. He did, Papa Sam, who was uh, from Russia, a car, you know, he had a car dealerships, kind of a tough character, all of his, I think he was five, three, five, four. Don't ask me how we let him dress him up as a, you know, a Russian older woman and my sister and I put our clothes on him and I made him up and I just can't even believe he allowed us to do that. But we did and it was fun and thank you, Papa Sam and everyone else that allowed my 16 year old hands to you know, to do a bruise or to do whatever I was obsessed with at the moment. Yeah, but what a, you know, learning opportunity and way that anyone watching can just continue to hone their skills. You know, it's just practice, practice, practice. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, Bobby, we are just about out of time. I, I Before I kind of do our wrap up, I wanted to ask, is there anything that you wanted to kind of talk about or say today that we didn't get to? Well, just for all of you guys that have watched the masterclass and have made comments and I, you know, I have to, I read them and I, you know, I hear, you know, the majority of these positive, amazing comments and they mean a, a lot to me. Um, so I'm really grateful and really appreciative and, you know, I, I, I read everything. So I, I appreciate, you know, the comments and I try to get back and answer things, but, you know, with this day and age, if you have more questions, you know, I would love to be able to answer them. So, um, you know, please keep them going. And my hope for everyone is health and, you know, we'll get out of this guys. We're all in this together. Stay home, you know, watch a lot of master class and just keep thinking about the future. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Bobby. It's so important to be able to talk to you today, even in this new way and always very special for me to connect with you again. No, thank you. I can't wait to, to go out to dinner with you in the, in the, in the soon future, I hope. Absolutely. And so for everyone watching, thank you for joining us for this session of Masterclass Live. We're gonna be doing these every week on Wednesday. Next week's session is going to be with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. So please come back and join us. Bobby, thank you so much again. We'll talk thank soon. Thank you, be well. Bye, Bye everybody.